A hideous voice came and Ariel was startled. She asked from Prince did you hear something? He replied no nothing. He turned back and spoke. By the way, you look good in that suit. When did you learn how to ride a horse? The suit she was wearing was looking absolutely perfect on her. She then spoke. I learned in my spare time. And yes, it's a relief Sir Alberto's suit. Unlike the main characters in the movie, who can't stop running all night long. Ariel's body was far from exercising, that's why my lower back quickly began to ache. She then spoke. My back hurts, I should have taken carriage. Ariel then asks Prince, did the paladins return nicely? Someone must have mixed a drug that caused an upset stomach in their meals today. The reason we were alone was that the paladins who had been following us to some extent suddenly started vomiting or grabbing their stomachs. I didn't expect this up to now, but Alberto seems to have prepared quite meticulously. Now this place was in the forest, and it was quiet without anyone's presence. Of those who participated in the hunting festival, we probably came the farthest. Kyle, who was running alongside me, stopped his horse, and so did I. He got off his horse and spoke. I should advise Rayhausty to clean the temple. Then he reached out to Ariel and put her on his cape. He continued, and now we can't turn back time. If you did, you would be playing with troublesome things. Now sit back and relax. I felt like I was going to live when I rested for a while after sitting on top of the shaky horse. She then spoke, thank you, and Sir Alberto didn't look half bad either. Don't you think? I was the one who suggested exchanging clothes. But I never thought we'd both end up looking so good. Hearing this all the gods became angry. And the chat window opens. Mont, the deity of arts, is objecting with a scowl on his face. Seal, the deity of destruction, is growling after recalling the unpleasant sight. Hest, the deity of knowledge, is rinsing his eyes with holy water. Hearing this even Prince became angry. Usually he wasn't very expressive person. But this time we can clearly see his angry face. He then spoke. Are you blind? It was the ugliest thing I've ever seen. All gods were agreeing with Prince. After a while, Ariel spoke. Anyway, I'm sorry that you ended up escorting me instead of participating in the hunt. He looked into the distant forest and answered. Do you want to go alone? No, hearing my stern answer. I heard him laugh. I didn't want to be left alone in the forest teeming with monsters. Besides, I'm the saintess. The oracle is helpful, but it was still safer to go with Kyle. Hunting festivals usually last until midnight. A search party is dispatched around midnight for those who can't come back even at midnight. He then replied, No I'm not going to participate in this hunt. I asked him with a puzzled expression. Wouldn't it be helpful to show off your bravery by hunting big monsters? He continued, sometimes you have to take care of yourself. Ariel thought, of course. It seems Kyle was also aware of the Empress's plot. I have a quick temper, so please get up already. But unexpected words came out of his mouth. Don't be surprised, sit and wait. The blade was pulled from his scabbard with a sharp sound. Immediately, a thump was heard in the forest, and the two horses standing there made a sound. What's going on? Thump, thump, thump sound came. Prince Kyle said not to worry and stay behind him. Contrary to Kyle's calm words at that moment, my horse. No, Alberto's horse raised its front paws and made a noise, then suddenly started running away in the other direction. No, don't go. I forgot to tell you to hang it up. I hurriedly got up and tried to catch the horse. But the horse had already run away. After a while, a faint shadow came rushing in and gradually revealed its shape. Something fat, with green skin and about three meters tall, was rushing here. It's a troll Ariel shouts. I forgot to tell you to hang it up. Kyle, who was looking at the monster with his sword drawn, frowned and said. Even at this moment, the troll continued to run at great speed. I stood behind him with clenched fists resisting my instinct to run away at any moment. Help me, the only word came out of Ariel's mouth. For a moment, as if he was hearing the cry in my heart, something lingered on Kyle's blade. And then suddenly the troll was defeated. It was bizarre to see it fall to the floor as if its whole body had been cut into pieces, 
rather than fall because his neck was cut off. Steam was rising from the blade Kyle was holding. Only his horse was watching this scene casually. I got goosebumps rather than being disgusted. The god of art, Mont, frowns. The god of destruction, Seal, runs around happily. All of a sudden, I was touched by the status quo of him being a sword master. That troll, turned into chunks of minced meat and slimes, probably won't know what happened until the moment of its death. His red eyes were still gleaming with terrifying flesh. Are you afraid of me? Suddenly I heard his voice. I looked into his eyes. A monotonous sense of fatigue stood in his red eyes as he looked at the place where the troll had died. A person who thinks it's trivial to kill something. What kind of life did he lead until this happened? The lieutenants advised me to save my smile while slaughtering. Strange rumors circulate about me among the soldiers. That I am a monster. After that, my expression completely hardened. Sometimes I don't know what kind of face I have. With a squeaky sound, Kyle slowly put the sword into the scabbard. After thinking for a moment, I opened my mouth to him. I'm not afraid of your highness. Then I saw him wriggle his eyebrows. You seem to have more courage than I thought. His self-helpful voice was calm, but somehow his eyes seemed lonely. Is there anyone who dares to approach Kyle with his sword drawn? I couldn't understand the loneliness and responsibility he had, but I suddenly remembered what I wanted to say. Ariel continued, If we were enemies, I would never want to meet you, but if you're an ally, you're the most reliable person. I mustered up the courage to speak a little more. He slowly turned his gaze towards me, and spoke to an ally. You just protected me, with that terrifying sword, Ariel replied. She thought, it was a huge troll. If I had been hit by that axe blade, I would have died immediately. She continued, so don't treat yourself like a monster. If it's real monsters, then we're talking about that. I pointed to the troll for a moment, then squeaked and looked away again. It's terrible to see it again. Hearing my foolish advice, he stared curiously at the troll for a long time. Of course, I agree with the advice of the lieutenants. If you smile with a sword in your hand, you will come out in dreams. His eyebrows seemed to wrinkle a little at my words, and a deep smile appeared on his lips. He said, the way you talk is getting more and more unreserved. Ariel continued, I believe in your promise to guarantee my life. Immediately, he shook his head as if he was dumbfounded. There was a deep smile on his lips that I had never seen before. After a while, a challenge was set before us in the order of schedule. Prince said, the horse ran away, and there is only one way. Alberto's horse ran away, and all that's left is Kyle's horse, and we have another hour to ride. The god of art, Mond, jeers Kyle, accusing him of being an obvious mastermind. The god of love, Odyssey, cheers for this typical cliché. The god of destruction, Seal, snorts. I put away the flickering chat window of the gods in front of me and thought about it for a while. Are there any sharp alternatives? Ariel suggests one idea. She said after waiting for a while then borrowing a horse from a passerby is. Prince replied, so you're suggesting to extort. That's not bad either. No, he continued. Borrowing someone else's horse in a place where monsters like trolls roam around would be the same as telling that person to die. I'm not that conscientious either, but I'm tired of having enemies. In the end, when I couldn't think of an alternative, I asked him in a bit of desperation. Ariel continued, but wouldn't it be too heavy if two people ride the horse? Then he reached out to his horse and touched its neck roughly. Prince said, Liza is a trained warhorse. It won't be tired of that kind of weight. Lisa's eyes was shining like a sun ray. Even Ariel also noticed it. That's a relief. I was worried that it would be heavy, but it was a relief. Anyway, it was my first time riding a horse with someone. Didn't you say you'd rest more? He narrowed his eyebrows and asked me. It's because I don't feel good enough to keep looking at that. I glanced at the troll's corpse. It's not a corpse. Anyway, it was even worse. Prince said, it certainly is not a good view. I heard his voice mixed with laughter. In fact, his movements were still unbelievable. I clearly realized the importance of not turning the tip of his sword into an enemy. Hold my hand. 
Soon he got on his big horse and reached out his hand. The saddle was wide, so I seemed to be able to ride in front of him without difficulty. I reached out my hesitant hand to him. He grabbed my hand and pulled me up. A heavy silence fell between us. My two legs were in one direction and only my upper body was turned unnaturally, so it seems that the position. I tried to regain my composure, but my voice trembled. I think I need to turn my leg a bit. At the moment, I was sitting with both legs in one direction and only my upper body was holding him, so I would have to turn one leg into a riding position to get a stable posture. And soon my lips were tingled. Somehow, a low and dangerous voice flowed. He said, I want you to put your hands away before that. Then I lowered my head slightly and looked at my left hand that was holding his thigh. And the moment I knew what I was holding on to, the accident stopped. What have I done? If there was a rewind button, I wanted to rewind time before getting on the horse. So my left hand was holding the very bad part of him. I, I'm sorry, I'm not a stutterer, but I was stuttering like crazy in this situation. I slowly removed my hand from him, stiffened. I made excuses in this embarrassing situation, but I soon realized that it was a mistake. His eyebrows twitched. No, it's too thick. Ah, this isn't it either. Then the chat window popped up. The god of destruction, seal, blushes, appreciating his magnificence. The god of benevolence, Oman, raises his lash and measures his not thy thigh. The god of art, Mond, sighs and acknowledges Kyle's victory. The chat window in front of me shimmered, and a party was held at the oracle. The god of love, Odyssey, publishes a poem called, Love is on his thigh. The god of knowledge, Hest, redefines what thigh is. They were excited, very excited. The god of knowledge, Hest, is biologically rigid. I desperately ended the oracle that was becoming increasingly stale. Then I turned around and sat down with my back against him. The gaze on the back of my head and the touch of my hand that still remained was driving me crazy. I'm sorry, it wasn't intentional. I realized that in embarrassing situations, it's better to be quiet. There was no answer from behind for a while. As I wiggled my fingertips in the maddening silence, I heard his voice, which seemed a little angry. If it was intentional, today's hunting would have ended here. He wrapped one arm around my waist to keep me from falling and started running his horse. It was more dynamic and wilder than Alberto's horse I had ridden earlier. Every time the horse hit the ground, his hard chest slammed against my back. Kyle didn't say anything for a long time after that with his stiff eyebrows. After running for about 40 minutes, we arrived at a huge rocky valley. It was magnificent and wonderful scenery. The rocks that have been weathered by the wind and turned round are growing like mushrooms. Kyle got off his horse, and I followed him. The largest of the rocks was as high as four stories high, and standing in front of it felt intimidating. On the dark red rock was a sentence engraved in an unreadable language. It was often said that priests and saintesses who participated in hunting festivals purified this rock. Although purifying the rocks doesn't eliminate all the monsters in the Kinston Mountains, it does prevent the monsters from appearing to some extent. As long as I have completed this mission today, even the Empress will no longer be able to attack me by mentioning the duties of a saintess. I stared silently at the rock. Then I quietly brought my right hand to its surface. It wasn't difficult to let the sacred power flow now. I don't know exactly what purification is, but I thought that maybe it could be done as if I was healing. Sacred power flowed down the surface of the rock. After a few seconds, the letters engraved on the rock began to glow. Even me, who was purifying, was surprised to open my eyes wide. Wildflowers were blooming here and there on the grass that sprang up when the purification was finished. I asked Prince, is purifying supposed to be like this? He replied, I have no idea, I have never seen. Kyle stared at the marvelous scenery for a long time, then turned to me. And spoke, what on earth are you? Red eyes that sparkled with suspicion. He was questioning me with his eyes, what the hell I had done. Maybe he was asking about my identity. What should I answer? In fact, it's the first time I've seen something like this, so I can't explain it. 
Only a warm wind blew through the silence. The sky suddenly became dark and it started to rain. He frowned and said. The temple forecast said it would be a sunny day. In the empire, the temple also served as a weather forecaster. I thought maybe it was because of me. Or the gods doing. Without thinking about it, I asked him. I wish we could find a place to hide from the rain for a while. Prince saw Ariel face and something was so mesmerizing about her that he can't figure it out. Then finally he spoke. I saw a cave earlier. It had rained so much that I couldn't even see the ground in the mud, so my body was already very wet. After a while, we found a cave large enough to fit a horse and went into it. My clothes, it's completely wet. The cave was a small cave with a closed end, and seemed perfect for a short rest. It rains heavily. I sat down on a rock that protruded a little like a chair, and Prince came near me and put his cloak on my shoulder. He spoke. So even a real saint can catch a cold. After a while he sat down side by side Ariel spoke. It was clear up until now, but why is there sudden thunder and lightning? Then Prince asked. I've heard that you have proven your power, but I can't believe it with my own eyes. I turned my gaze away from him and looked at the rainy landscape outside the cave. Ariel muttered. A real saintess. The atmosphere was getting heavy, but the sound of rain made up for the awkwardness. He went on. What was the reason you hid it until now? It wasn't an interrogative tone. I hesitated for a moment, then opened my mouth. I wasn't a real saintess. And I still don't think I'm a real one. After a long silence, he spoke again. Even though you have holy power, you don't think you're a real saintess. Interesting. I replied to his somewhat cynical remark. I'm still just Ariel, the slobber of the temple. He let out a low voice after a while. I thought you had changed. From one day on, you have definitely become a different person. To the extent I doubt whether it was the same person as the woman I knew. Like a sword master, his senses were sharp. But I pretended to be calm and accepted his words. Ariel then spoke. Well, everyone has a turning point in their life. I think I was too immature. I agree, though, he replied. Then he raised his hand and swept away my wet hair. And he spoke. But from where I'm standing, it doesn't look that simple. My heart was pounding in the dark light in his eyes, but I didn't waver and looked straight at him. Thoughts that troubled my heart flowed along with the sound of rain. I broke through the silence and opened my mouth. I couldn't explain this to him anyway. I opened my mouth and spoke. And I'm trying to live a different life than before. It's not easy. But still, I could feel his deep gaze. Somehow, hearing the sound of raindrops stimulated my emotions. However, these days, I'm thinking about it. Am I better than I was before? Ariel in the novel was definitely a villain. So, am I a good person, possessing Ariel? Ariel continued. She said, still, sometimes I question whether I'm doing the right thing. I made up my mind to live this new life but somehow it still feels like history is repeating itself. The choices I'm making now are only making things worse. After a while, Prince spoke. I guess that's possible, but who am I to judge whether the life you're leading is good or bad? The only person who can decide that is you. For what it's worth, I like this version of you more. You catch me off guard sometimes. But I like people who look straight ahead and move forward. I turned around and stared blankly at him, then looked under the cloak he had covered, and noticed that the rain had wet his shirt, revealing his shoulders and skin. There was a rush of heat on my face. Then suddenly a loud noise came. The sound of something exploding was heard nearby. Kyle pulled me behind him. Then we went to see what happened. The rock, which looked quite large, was burned black and scattered with its fragments. I stared blankly at it in surprise. Is it lightning? He frowned and asked. Lightning? What does lightning in the dry sky mean? And why did it suddenly rain so hard? The answers were gathered into one. I put my hand on my forehead. And after a while I whispered very softly. Open the oracle again. Then a blue window appeared in front of me. And dizzy messages flew into the chat window. The god of love, Odyssey, starts selling corn snacks again. 
The god of art, Mond, grumbles while sitting down and watching you. The god of destruction, Seal, alternately looks at Kyle's pants and the cave you came from. The god of benevolence, Oman, looks curious about what has happened. The god of knowledge, Hest, praises himself as his plan to move you worked. My head was pounding, but I kept the chat window in front of me out of sight as much as possible and told Prince. I was surprised. Perhaps he doesn't want to know that the god of his birth month is very interested in his pants dance and blushes his cheeks whenever he has time. Then he spoke. I don't think it's a big deal. Let's go back. He took my hand again and put me on top of his horse. We ran straight away. How far we ran, I wonder, towards the end of the afternoon, we reached the place where the hunting festival started. Prince spoke. Will you go back to the temple now? I replied, I suppose so. The festival's over. And I feel like if I overstay my welcome any further, my life really will be in danger. Prince laughed and spoke. It was an eventful festival, wasn't it? First, two of her closest aides die, then her brother comes back looking like well. It must be quite vexing to see the two of us in such good shape. I could feel a hint of joy in his red eyes, which glowed dangerously dark. Funny, at that moment, the mystery of why Kyle didn't participate in the hunting festival was solved. I ask Prince, so do the deaths of the Empress aides. Have anything to do with why you didn't participate in the hunt this? He then spoke, I'm sure I don't know what you're talking about. Never mind. Here, take your cape back. Thank you for lending it to me. While she was about to leave, Prince grabbed her hand. She looked at him with a slightly startled look, and he raised her hand up. Then he lowered his head slightly and placed his lips on the border between the back of her hand and her fingers. His red eyes were staring at me wide open without looking down. The touch of his lips gave a subtle touch to my skin. After a while he lifted his lips from my hand and said see you soon Ariel. When he let go, I slowly lowered my hand and went on my why my heart is pounding so much. The next day. Ah my whole body hurts like a shit. I did too much horse riding. I guess I'm not good at long distance horseback riding. There's been some after effects for a few days. I searched for the hunting festival among the archives of the temple library that I had previously borrowed. There were also records of what happened in the past hunting festivals, and there was something interesting about it. It is said that a man named Muller, the Crown Prince's Imperial Studies teacher, was killed by a number of arrows that were accidentally fired at the last hunting festival. And those who shot the arrows were Baron Dimitri and young Baron Ludwig. They were the entourages of the Empress. The Crown Prince requested a reinvestigation, yet it wasn't accepted. I heard their names yesterday. As I thought, Kyle did that. The closer we got, his vigilance dimmed even more, but he was definitely a dangerous man. In fact, it seems that none of the three male leads are harmless. If his blade points outward at me, he'll be a perfect ally, but if it's directed at me as in the original story, or in the prophecy, I will probably never be as afraid. In any case, we were dealing with one enemy, the Empress, so we were allies, but friendship with him through a common enemy. And that's when the thought got there. Suddenly there was a knocking sound from the window. I approached the window a little nervous, and was startled to see the child outside the window. As soon as I opened the window, the child of the thief's guild slipped into my room. I ask, are you also a sword master? At my words, the child asked back. What do you mean? Ah, no, how did you get here? I inquired. By climbing the wall, the child replied indifferently. In fact, if he had been flying like Kyle, he wouldn't have almost been killed by Alberto's horse. What information do I need to know? The day I went to the hunting festival, I gave the child a mission. At that, he nodded his head and opened his mouth. I found out that the Empress chief maid had bought the thing the saintess said. From where? I've been to Lloyd's merchant before and saw the Empress chief maid angry. It is said that Lloyd's merchant doesn't handle corporate goods. At that time, I passed it on without much thought, but now that the Empress has become an enemy, I need even a little bit of information. 
The kid replied, It's only been purchased through a connection in the Deviamon Wizard Guild. If it's Deviamon, according to the information I got from the books I read, there were several types of wizard guilds. In fact, the term, school, was more suitable for the group of wizards than the name of a guild. And the Deviamon Guild was a very secretive and powerful organization with a long history of black magic. Wait a minute. So, rather than grabbing evidence that she bought Cronia, maybe. It's also a guild that has as many different kinds of ghost stories as modern Freemason horror stories. Like moving the world behind the scenes with political black hands. I ask from child, how do I make contact with that person? The child looked at me in awe. It seemed surprising that the saintess was casually asking about the black magic guild. He then replied, the magic night market is held on the first day of every month, and I heard that people from the Deviamon guild also appear there. The child held out a piece of paper and I saw a picture of an inverted skull. I asked, is this the emblem of the Deviamon guild? He replied, yes. And on the back page, I put together some information about the Deviamon guild. Indeed, when I looked at the back page, information about the guild leader and other information were written on it. The kid informs Ariel, Alberto Mikhail, only knows the assassins are dead, yet they're alive, and they're grinding their teeth on Alberto. I also received a definite answer that they would give evidence. As expected, he's a trusted thief's guild member as well. I smiled with satisfaction, and then spoke, thanks. You're exceeding my expectations, though. You've got plenty of it today. I took out 100 franc. And was about to give him. But then I stopped. I said, wait a minute. I still don't even know the name. Of my most competent little worker. What should I call you? The kid looked at me at awe. Then he spoke. Oh, my name is Noah. I replied, that's a cool name. From now on, please take care of me as well. And the next mission, with a bright smile, Noah accepted the secret letter I had written with a somewhat embarrassed expression. Give it to the crown prince. Just put it where he can see it. Since he visits the town frequently for inspection, you have a chance to contact him without even going to the imperial palace. The child smiled brightly and spoke. All right, just leave it to me, your holiness. At night. I arrived at the outskirts of the capital, where the night market is located. According to Noah information, there were shabby houses everywhere compared to the decent houses I had seen before. Also between the narrow alleys with a musty smell, there were lights and tents. This was also the moment when I realized that the gap between the rich and the poor was wide. Mages might be sensitive enough to detect my holy power, so I made sure to wear the ceiling pendant. I deactivated the prophecy fur on just in case. I told all the gods. I'm going to take a bath and go to bed, so don't pester me. But now I feel a bit nervous. Then again, it probably doesn't matter what I do. I got called in by Rehas to prove my holy power in front of the congregation. Ha! Now I've really crossed the point of no return. Does this mean I have to live as the saintess forever? No no way I don't want to live like this. I'm going to give my spot to Camilla. And go off T. Omicron enjoy the rest of my life. I can do this and get my freedom. And, I even have Hesed's bracelet on. I can face any danger. Then, a familiar voice was heard from behind. Saintess. Ariel thought I just had to go and jinx it. I turned around and saw Noah. He said, I'm certain I wrote in my letter that it would be dangerous to come here alone. And yet you are here. I ask, did you come to accompany me? Noah nodded his head. I smiled, thanked Noah and started walking alongside him. He continued talking. In the night market, merchants entrusted with sales by the guilds often charge unreasonable prices to unfamiliar customers, so be careful. Do you think I'm going to be deceived? I ask, no, not at all. He replied, what a straightforward fellow. I was a little nervous about the gloomy atmosphere, but having a companion made me feel more confident. The night market here was different from the large and pleasant night market of the Rose Festival. There seemed to be very few shops. And there weren't many customers. However, 
Most of the guests were wearing suspicious clothes, and I assumed that they were magicians. The price of bat eyeballs is crazy these days. It's 10 franc for a pair, what is left even if you make a potion? The voices of magicians could be heard around. As if I was one of them, I slowly began to look at the stalls. Eww, there were also disgusting and terrifying ones. Isn't it crazy to serve rat meat as a delicacy? Who are the people lining up there? I shrugged and shifted my gaze to the side. But next to it was an egg the size of my fist. Whoa, what is this? It was a colorful egg that looked like a Russian doll matryoshka. It's an egg of a demon. The shopkeeper asked me with suspicious eyes. Since you don't know about demonic creatures, you don't seem to be a magician. I thought maybe I made it so obvious that I am not a mage. So I tried to give an excuse, ah yes. I'm not a magician, but a magician's assistant. I quickly surrounded myself for fear that he might cheat on me as I was an innocent person. The master is a very vicious one, and I have several items to buy, so I come and take a look. It also meant that if he tried to hit me, the violent master wouldn't let him go. The store owner quickly cleared his guard and explained. A demonic creature is a creature that wakes up when the owner's magic is poured on it. This egg has a high grade among demonic eggs, so there's a high probability that a useful one will be born. I ask, is it like a monster? The shopkeeper made a face first, but then proceed to explain. It's similar, but it's more like a pet as it's intelligent and has the ability to interact with its owner. My curiosity grew when I heard the word, pet. When I was young, it was my dream to have a dog. Noah, what do you think? I turned to Noah and asked. It's truly a high-grade egg. I haven't seen it myself, but I've heard that the thinner the stripes, the better. Noah, who accompanied me, explained in detail. He was a great source of information for the first night market I visited. I agreed with No's words. However, I was curious as I couldn't find such thing in other stores. How much is the price? I asked. The shopkeeper replied. 1,000 franc. I opened my mouth wide in surprise at the unexpected answer. 1,000 franc. It's a unique grade egg. Shouldn't you pay 1,000 franc to stay? The devil's eggs are forbidden to trade, so you can't buy them at the merchant. Besides, unique grades are very rare in our night market. You're lucky today, I replied, raising my eyebrows. Still, I think 1,000 franc is too much. He continued. If you leave today, you won't be able to get a unique grade, will you be okay? It seems that the customer really likes it, so I will deduct 100 franc. When I showed my concern, the owner cut off 100 franc. Saint S, let's just go. Noah urged me to leave the store with a fed up look. Yet somehow, I kept my eyes on the egg. Then after a while the deal was done at 500 franc. The bargain was successful but it was still expensive. If you come to our guild, I think you will become a great talent. At No's admiration, I was embarrassed for nothing. Shall I consider the thief's guild as a second career path? I walked the night market again with Noah and looked around other shops. What I was looking for today was the Deviamon guild's shop. I saw a black skull. And if I put it upside down, I found it. Right. It was the Deviamon guild. Behind the stall stood a suspicious-looking merchant in a black robe. With a trembling heart, I approached the Deviamon Guild's stall, and I mustered up the courage while holding out my things, and spoke to them. Hey, you're from the Deviamon Guild, right? I want to meet the guild leader of the Deviamon Guild. It was absurd, but the merchant's eyes stared at me sharply. The item I brought out was a 100 franc, ancient coin with minor divine power. I bought at the Holy Relic Shop. I bought it after hearing from Noah that the guild leader of the Deviamon Guild liked ancient coins and collected them. The merchant who picked up the coin looked at it carefully, and then he stared at me. It's a unique thing. Where did you get this? I came here because the guild leader was very interested in coins, so I wanted to trade. I also have something to buy. The merchant, who had paused for a while at my answer, touched the magic ring he was wearing with his other hand. After a moment, 
Two men in black robes appeared behind me. I'll take you to the guild leader. As expected, No's information that the guild leader also traded coins was correct. I followed them out of the night market and started walking through the night. I wasn't afraid as I had received CL's blessing in bed with the forced excuse that I was afraid of nightmares. Noah was with me, too. I think it's over there. As I listened to Noah's words, I saw a mansion exuding a gloomy energy. I told Noah, Noah, from here on, I will go in by myself. But, he didn't want to leave me there. I have an idea. Let's meet in front of the house later. Although the truth is I'm worried that something dangerous will happen to Noah. I turned around and walked forward, leaving him behind. As I entered the gloomy place with two men without a word, the mansion door closed with a squeaking sound. After that, I just kept walking with them. As we approached a large space, I could see a man sitting on the sofa. The man's hand was fiddling with the coin I had handed to the merchant earlier. It's an ancient coin. It's not a common thing, but it's a product that has a low value. It's expensive, about 100 franc. I was startled by the sweet voice. Later I realized that it was a man's voice. Slowly turned his head. Ellen now I can see him properly. Thus, for the first time, I came face to face with the representative of the Deviamon Guild. His hair, which had been discolored by the flames, was silver as white as snow. The purple eyes, which seemed to be a mixture of blue and red, made me feel like my heart was sinking. I looked at him and opened my mouth. I came here because I wanted to get something. I brought it because I thought it was precious, I'm disappointed. He asked, what are you looking for? I answered right away, Cronia, Cronia, the illegal medicinal herb, was banned from trade. This is the item that the Empress Chief made was trying to buy from Lloyd's merchant. Noah said that it was sold by the Deviamon Guild. The man looked at me and said in a relaxed tone, Ah, that. My heart was pounding. Is the information Noah obtained correct? We don't deal with it. A corner of his lips twisted. It was an outright lie and rejection. But I didn't give up and pleaded with him as if it were nonsense. No way. I'm sure I've heard that Cronia is sold here. At my words, his. Purple eyes stared at me. I spoke. I heard that you can get Cronia as well as Beckia and Ansha here. They were all banned narcotics. According to the information Noah obtained, those items are rumored to be distributed to only a small number of people in the Deviamon Guild. At one point, his eyes seemed to glow mysteriously. His feet approached me and he stopped in front of me. And spoke. Who did you hear that from? I kept my composure and answered clearly. I can't say that. He continued to ask. Whom did you hear about the drugs from? I opened my eyes and answered politely. Emperor Rosé Elide mentioned the Deviamon Guild at the secret meeting of the female nobility. I need Cronia for personal purposes, so I came to you with a coin. He asked. What was Rosé Elide talking about? I replied. I heard that the Deviamon Guild handles drugs that are prohibited. She also gave the names of those who belong to the Deviamon Guild among the nobles. The Empress said that she was well aware of the weakness of the Deviamon Guild, and that she had the Deviamon Guild in the palm of her hand. His fine eyebrows could be seen contorting. He then gets up from his seat and. Then he raised his hand. Soon his eyes lit up, and a mysterious light stretched out from his hand. And I heard his question again. Who are you, Celestine? I recited the information with blank eyes. It's only half of the information anyway, so he can't infer my information. Celestine was the surname of Ariel's mother, who was a baron's daughter, and Ariel used her mother's surname when introducing herself deliberately to show that she had half the aristocratic blood. He quickly licked his lips nervously. You will forget everything you heard from Rosé Illide. I answered with a blank expression. Yes. He continued, and you will forget that you met me today. Yes. I answered him politely. He stared into my eyes for a long time. Then he mumbled. I don't know why I feel bad. I stood blankly, trying not to make eye contact with him. Now go, Celestine. I went out. And finally I relaxed. I was so proud of my acting.
I thought he might caught me, but I came out unharmed. This should ensure the Deviamon Guild draws its sword against the Empress. Now that my work here is done, shall I get back to the temple? Next day as Ariel told Noah to send letter to Crown Prince. The Crown Prince caught Noah and tied him up. Prince spoke. How exactly did a kid from the Thieves Guild become an errand boy to the saint herself? Noah was kneeling in front of Prince, looking at him with his body bound. Prince raised the corners of his lips at the look of a young boy, even in a frightening situation. The letter must have belonged to Ariel. In Prince's hand was Ariel's letter, which Noah had placed in his pocket, taking advantage of the commotion. He was successful in delivering the letter. However Noah replied, I'm just getting paid and running errands. Ariel told Noah to answer anyone who asked so. That would be a protection for each other. It must also be true that Noah was paid 50 franc for this work alone. You seem like a pretty smart fellow. Despite the praise, No's expression didn't change. Prince took a coin from his pocket and put it in front of No's eyes. There were 10 gold coins worth a whopping 100 franc. Give me something to do. No's eyebrows moved slightly for the first time. Prince's voice was heard. Report to me about the movement of the saintess in the future. At those words, No's eyebrows twitched and moved greatly. Prince was looking down at him with cool red eyes. You can get an undeserved price and run errands for me as well. Noah knew who Prince was. He's the only prince of the empire and a sword master, even to the point that if he offends his heart, he could have a very bad ending. I will decline, but Noah answered him as if he had nothing to think about. A chill radiated from Prince's gaze. The aura close to living literally was strong enough to make the body of an untrained boy tremble, yet Noah didn't reverse his words. I don't want to betray her. So I can't receive this money. Noah spoke word by word. Even though he was getting paid and running errands, Noah knew that Ariel was also considerate of him. She provided another way for him to live and saved him by pouring holy power. The only way for Noah to repay her favor was to do his best to comply with her requests. Prince drew his sword from its scabbard. A blade with a cool black glow was aimed at No's neck. The blue energy rising from the sword master's sword made No's face pale. If it's a threat, not conciliation. Prince's lively voice reached No's ears. What are you going to do? Noah was well aware what kind of consequences his answer would bring. Yet he answered without hesitation. I still can't. He was eight years old. The glare in the eyes of the small boy looked straight into Prince's eyes. Prince twisted his lips at No's slightly trembling but firm voice. As expected, you're a good fellow. And he pulled back the sword that was almost going to touch his neck. Noah looked at him with an expression as he didn't understand the satisfied voice. Your spirit just now is great. Don't change. Prince pushed the drawn sword into the scabbard. Noah looked at him blankly. Prince spoke. I would have killed you if you had accepted my offer. He made a low voice and turned away from Noah. He then added his words. If you want to learn the sword later, come to me. The agility of your body was exceptional. Not knowing when the sword was used, the rope that bound Noah snapped and loosened. Noah stared blankly at Prince back. And then he thanked him. He bowed and said, Thank you, your highness. While leaving the place, Prince thought, Where did she find that kid? Ariel, the longer I know her, the less I know. The next day, as if nothing had happened, the morning began with the oracle. The god of knowledge, Hest, welcomes the morning sun. The god of benevolence, Oman, examines your condition. The god of art, Mond, says the dirt on your shoes is questionable. I couldn't sleep, so I went out for a nearby night out and came back. I spoke in an indifferent tone. The god of destruction, Seal, is wary of something on the table. I suddenly remembered something I bought at the night market yesterday. Then, I lifted a single egg as big as a child's head on the table and looked at it closely. Come to think of it, the merchant said it was an egg of a pet demon. I replied, I picked it up. The god of knowledge, Hest, recognizes your shameless lie. 
The god of destruction, Seal, is wary of eggs. The god of benevolence, Oman, strokes Seal's head. To be honest, I bought this because it reminded me of a parrot that I had raised in my previous life. I don't know what will come out of it, but it's not a bad thing because it's a pet. Compared to the sack of gold coins, which was somewhat repulsive, the egg was cute and didn't feel anything special. I injected holy power into the egg through my hand. Although it was an egg of a demonic creature, the egg absorbed the holy power well as if it were eating rice. Whatever its bloodline is, I just have to raise it well. By the way, can I give the demonic creature holy power? At afternoon I was having lunch with Ray Hausty. Last time, I clearly showed holy power in front of people with the holy spear. However, I wasn't at peace either. He spoke. After witnessing your holy powers for themselves, the priests will no longer make inappropriate comments. The rumors will stop now. He said as he cut the meat with a knife. Really that's a relief, I replied. I looked at him as if I was possessed for a moment. I had a hard time swallowing the food. It's something I didn't ask, but suddenly I'm curious. His voice was heard again. When did your holy power begin to manifest? It was a difficult moment with a question I didn't really want to answer, but I tried to keep my composure. And I opened my mouth to him with an expressionless face. It hasn't been long. Someday I will have to answer that. She thought. I even once cheated on the holy sphere by purchasing a pendant that hides holy power. She continued. I did develop my holy power, but I didn't think I was going to be a real saintess. At my words, he was staring at me silently. I spoke in a calm tone. That thought remains the same to this day. Then I lifted my fork again and ate the salad. Ray Hausty didn't hold the tableware for a long time and opened his lips. To think that you still think of yourself as a fake saintess even though you have holy power. His low voice rang in my ears. One obviously may think that it doesn't make sense. Yet his answer was unexpected. I replied, of course there's a reason why I think so. And you won't tell me why. A heavy gaze was felt, but I didn't respond. And after a while, I heard the sound of him raising his knife again. Slice, the meat was being cut. The choker started shaking again. He opened his mouth again. Thank you for being honest. Ariel. Suddenly, the sound of his voice made my throat tingle. What was Ray Housey thinking at this moment? I wondered. I raised my head and looked at his face. But apart from being grateful, the cold, golden eyes were staring at me. His red lips are sweet and his voice is resolute. He said, I have no intention of letting you go. His eyes were full of obsession, as if I was entangled. He continued, when you were a fake saintess with no holy power, and now, nothing has changed. His lips formed a smile. It was a beautiful face, yet I felt a subtle creep. He continued, this is your home. Ariel, it means you're the owner of this temple. And I'm your. I hurriedly looked down from him. Then I spoke. Ah, yes. Is it all ready for tomorrow? At my words, Ray Housty closed his lips for a moment, thought for a moment, then pulled out his words. I'm going to ask you once again, but do you really want to go? I nodded, and said, still, it's his imperial majesty's personal letter. Ray Housty said with a firm gaze at my words. There are good parts of your change, yet also disadvantages. I replied, please prepare well for tomorrow. Sir Ray Housty, the emperor sent me a letter requesting a visit to confirm whether what in the empress, womb was a real baby. The chosen empress needs God's blessing. The trap I had set was finally responding. Meanwhile in the imperial palace, the empress shouts, Your imperial majesty, this is a setup, please listen to me. The empress shook her head and pretended to be surprised. She continued, maybe the chief maid abused my name to do this, but I don't know. I'm pregnant with a prince, how can I? Her mouth is dry, but in this case, pretending to be innocent is the best. Are you serious? However, the emperor opened his mouth with a voice of suspicion instead of sympathy. What do you mean? 
The Empress' shoulders shuddered. Only the corners of her lips, which were lowered, could explain her current feelings. Emperor continued, Cronia leaves have already been found in the Empress's residence. The Empress' face darkened. He said, the chief maid confessed she had bought Cronia. She defends herself by saying, Your Imperial Majesty, are you doubting me now? What crazy woman would buy Cronia during her pregnancy? Cronia is a strong drug and it was also known that eating it during one's pregnancy could cause birth defects. He continued, I asked for a man in the temple. The Empress lips trembled at the Emperor's words. One of the other features of Cronia is to capture the absence of tachycardia. And when one consumes Cronia, their stomach gets full of gas, causing it to bloat. Just like the current empress at 16 weeks pregnant. Depending on the person, it may swell like a full term. So Cronia, is a drug that can lead to gastrointestinal pregnancy. Your Imperial Majesty, the empress's submerged voice scratched the emperor's nerves. The emperor continued. In addition, the temple asked for Alberto's severe punishment. The empress knew what had happened after hearing the news today. It is said that conclusive evidence came out that Alberto was the instigator behind the attack on an apprentice priestess, who was the saints' entourage at the temple. Alberto obviously said he handled it well, yet he couldn't even guess what had happened. Even her limbs like close associates suffered on the hunting ground, and even things like this. The empress was almost out of her mind. The emperor said, the Count of Mikhail would be expelled completely. The Empress opened her eyes wide at those words. How dare you towards my family? The Emperor continued. If I do something wrong, I, the Emperor, will pay the price, and shouldn't the Empress family do the same? Your Imperial Majesty, beside this she has nothing to say. The Emperor ordered her. Empress, prepare to meet the priests tomorrow. They will check your addiction to Cronia and the well-being of the child. The emperor left the red-eyed empress and turned around, going out as it was. There was only a cool chill in the empty room of the empress. Her clenched fists were trembling. She thought, why is the emperor talking about Cronia all of a sudden? They even found evidence of the assassination order. Alberto said he dealt with it properly this time. Don't tell me, is this another one of your foul tricks? Saint Ariel. If the Emperor finds out my pregnancy is fake, it's all over. All of my meticulous planning ruined by that wretched saint. After a while, a scream that was close to a groan rang out desperately. The next day, I went to the Imperial Palace with Duane. Behind me, the guards were standing as if escorting us, and when I rolled up the magnificent corridor and went into the hall, I saw the Emperor sitting on the throne. And next to the emperor was the empress with a haughty face, holding her slightly swollen belly. The area around the throne was adorned with jewels and peonies, and hundreds of golden candlesticks were burning on the walls. As much as it was the imperial palace of the empire, it was majestic and splendid. How much is all this? I clicked my tongue and moved on. Originally, there would have been high-ranking nobles and officials, but they weren't invited as the reason for requesting the blessing was a doubt that would be triggered by Cronia. There are only the guard knights who can take the empress with them at any time. The guard knights stood still without a single move. Blessings from the nine gods to his imperial majesty the emperor and her imperial majesty the empress. I bowed my head and greeted them as usual. Then I lifted my head and looked into the eyes of the emperor. Those dark brown eyes looked a bit hazy these days. Thank you for coming. A slightly hoarse voice came out of the emperor's mouth. Hem. He feels a little different than usual. I felt a strange sense of discomfort. Today the saintess was called. The emperor coughed once and continued. To ask for the god's blessing for the baby in the empress, womb. The empress cold gaze was directed at me. The atmosphere in the hall was strangely chaotic. May the glory of the gods be with you. To celebrate the meeting, the temple also prepared a small gift. Sir Duane brought the box and opened the it. It was made using Cradium, the prince-to-be's birthstone. I bowed my head once and saluted the empress. Then I lifted the small, equal-sized sphere that had been given to him by Duane. Thank you. 
The servant took it and placed it at the empress' feet. I turned my head and looked at the emperor. And ask. But the crown prince is nowhere to be seen. Then he gave a worried expression and furrowed his eyebrows. Prince, that guy where is he, I wonder. Around the time I frowned and thought that the emperor was somehow different from usual. The empress intercepted the emperor's words. The crown prince was busy and couldn't attend. Ah, right. The emperor nodded his head blankly. I lifted my head and met the empress' eyes. Her lips were smiling, yet her eyes were as cold as ice. From the first moment I met the empress' eyes, I could confirm that what I expected was right. The empress continued. Last time, there were many rude things about the fake saintess from Chiago. Saintess. I replied with a light smile to the empress' words. Don't say things like that. Today is the day I came to bless your imperial majesty the empress. We were both smiling, but the mood felt as if we were walking on the edge of a knife. Rosé raised the corners of her lips at my words, which seemed to gesture to her to get to the point, and continued. I was told that the saintess had proved your divine power in the temple. Then, the candle, which had flickered in the slight breeze, no longer flickered. At that moment, the sound of Duane staggering was heard. I narrowed my eyes and looked at her. Rosé's eyebrows were raised. She spoke. Could you possibly heal dozens of people who are addicted to unscented and odorless poison at once? I heard Duane collapsed with a thud. I looked behind me to see he was banging his head. This. It's poison. Come to your senses. I heard the guards screaming in surprise. But that's only for a while. Everyone started swaying one by one. The sound of the pulled swords falling to the floor one by one was heard. You. I glared at Rosé, trying to keep my mind straight. The emperor, whose eyes gradually became cloudy, finally closed his eyelids. His head fell to the side. Did you end up doing something like this? Cornered rat has few options. Whether to undo the mistakes of the past, or to just go out until the end. And she was definitely the latter. You don't answer my question. The empress' venomous voice was heard. A person who will somehow trample on others and climb up, rather than fall down because of a false affair full of cronia. A few of the guard knights drew their swords, yet they fell to the floor before they could even approach. The incense had probably spread before I came in, but certain types of scent poison require a trigger to work, and she probably used it to trap me. The empress slowly came forward, and, then, a small empty bottle with a magic circle on it fell as it brushed against the hem of her dress. The bottle is probably designed to react quickly to the scent of poison that fills the air when it's opened. She bent her back, picked it up, and began to descend the stairs. I feel on my knees, and knelt down. The saintess, who had a persistent love for the crown prince, was ordered by him and tried to kill the emperor and empress with poisonous incense. Seizing the opportunity, the saint carried with her a cursed draft, which she used to kill the benevolent leaders, even at the cost of her own life. The empress' lips moved softly. In the process, his imperial majesty unfortunately passed away, and the empress the prince protected her. She smiled as she touched her tummy with tenderness. She spoke. Our poor prince who protected his mother and became a star. A ship that had nothing in it, it almost gave me goosebumps. Soon she put the bottle in front of me. Even if you're the saintess, you're only human, and you can't stand poison. Her complexion looked fine alone because she had already drunk the neutralizer. I lifted my head and opened my dry lips as I stared at her. And ask, where is the crown prince? Then she smiled as if it were a pity. You worry about Prince until the very end. But don't worry too much, I'm not going to kill him. The Empress' eyes widened deeply. I'll just blind his eyes by drugging him and seal his aura. It isn't difficult to add medicine to the food of the Imperial Palace. Maybe Prince is with Alberto right now. Ah, ah, Alberto suffered a lot too. And then I will make Prince my personal pet. But this time, I'm going to ask you to take all the blame, overturn the temple, and restore that child's honor. I'm sure your maid, who's lucky enough to survive, will be killed. 
After chatting for a while, the Empress turned her back on me. It wouldn't be a bad thing to live as the Widow Empress after all. And when she took a few steps, I said, She's not a maid, she's an apprentice priestess, our Daisy. The Empress turned around at the sound of a voice different from before. I'm saying that if you know it, you should tell me. After I finished acting, I got up from my, wiping my hands, and said, Scenario 1 is amazing, what? At the first hearing of her term and my normal appearance, the Empress made her face hard and her lips trembled. You, how? I shrugged my shoulders and told her. Except that this is also a scenario I wrote. What the hell is? The Empress muttered. I ordered Sir Duane. Wake up. Duane, nap time is over. Duane, who was pretending to collapse, got up at my words. He looked at me with a fed up look and said. As expected, the saintess is a very terrifying person. The god of knowledge, Hest, agrees with Duane. Our story ends my dear friends. Thanks for watching. Please comment and like our video. This will help us.